Welcome back to One Piece Anime Re-Review Episode 101. Yep, we're probably past episode 100 for this one. Excuse me. And as of this very episode, but episodes they released dubbed overall that I have left to watch is pretty much about 28 episodes, but I'm not going to watch far more. The reason why? Because I had extended basically this time on this series because the flashback stuff, which I'm going to discuss here, which is most of the flashback, but not it's not entirely finished yet. Yes, uh, these episodes cover basically the rest of chapter 965 and go straight to 971. Basically about five or six chapters. That's just basically the standard for this one. And I was looking at basically the release at this point and like, wow. And this is shocking. Can you believe these episodes came out just a little over two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. We are that far back now. Two years. And that is amazing. The fact that we are exactly two years, like, we're like two and a half years back from the series, which is awesome. Now, in these episodes, we get the debut of a good number of characters, but not as lot as last batch. We get the debut of Kazumuki Semaru, who is an old man who apparently... Get this, uh, after his debut, he actually is able to have to bury, bury for you. Like, wait, doesn't my thumb have the present day? The guy's no longer alive, that's why. Yeah, he's deceased. How? Not really explained. He only speaks in one episode I saw. He's voiced by Corey J. Phillips. Mm hmm. Yeah, and they reveal this when Odin attacks him later in another episode. There's also more members of our driver. There's Yuri, who has no credit for his dub actor. Let's see, there's also Yaman, Mr. Mamora, Mogron, Max Marks, Ahasigajin, who's actually the former ruler of the, the Monok Dukum. He actually does have a credit for, he does not have a credit for double actor, but he does speak in the episode. He appears in one episode, 968. And surprisingly, that's it. It is kind of weird. Like, it's completely unknown. The guy, you know, like I said, he only appears in two episodes. Mm -hmm. He only appears physically for like one episode. That's it. Uh, there's also Genryu. Jackson Banner. Moon Isaac Jr. Apparently, Yamato makes her debut here. Even though that it's probably a quick cameo. So, what exactly happened in these episodes? Well, <clears throat> in the previous episode, I had mentioned that basically, well, Od that Raja once meets Odin. And, well, just by sheer coincidence, they just happen to come across now where the Raja pirates are. And they have a brawl with them. Yep, a brawl that lasts for three days. And the fourth day, they exchange gifts. And then they reveal, of course, in the case of Roger, he hasn't even wiped here in a while, so... After their fight, which by the way, the other thing, we actually have Odin fighting uh, Sabin, who's voiced by Ian St. Clair. Which is kind of strange, the fact that we actually have a third character in One Piece, voiced by Ian St. Clair. Sabin's got two. I think Jim has got five. Yeah, she's got like five characters. Like, she voiced character from the Little Garden arc. Uh, I think she also voiced someone from the who appeared in Alabasta. I think also in Water so I think it was like one or two other characters. I think she's voiced the most characters. I'm not sure why she got a lot of screen... She got a lot of, like... It's kind of weird. Now, normally, like, people usually probably have, like, one role, and that's it. Sometimes these characters are here for, like, one, two episodes. That's... A lot of these voices, because like, probably because One Piece is so popular... People just probably really want to go on the series. Oh, I should mention, though, that about Yamato's voice actor, my, my share Regos, who's known for voicing, um, a character who also were in Komodo in this series. I think it's Michelle Regos, her name is. Yeah, she's the voice of Yo from uh, You, uh, the one who appeared in the one where I smartphone. It's the same voice actors, but... I haven't heard yet, but I think she, her parents here is most like a cameo, but it'll speak in part just yet. She is a little bit later. So, in the case, basically what happens here, so after the brawl, they 
Of course, Raj reveals what exactly is going on with him is that he has one year left to live. And he is really wanting to basically finish exploring the Grand Line before he dies. And he thought that this particular island was, because it was the last known island basically would explore. But apparently there's one more island left and basically he wants to find the last island. An island that's got no name. And apparently there's pornoglyphs. And it's revealed that Odin can read this stuff. Yes, so he wants to get the red pornoglyphs and the fact that, well, a bunch of... And, and of course, they go to various same places. And of course, uh, Odin agrees. Wiper doesn't like it very much, but he allows him to go. Uh, Cat and Dogstorm and Cat Paper decide to tag along. Uh, Kiku's brother decided to stay with the White Bear Pirates. And that proved to be... Well, in a way, that was actually a really smart move because he is actually one of the Vengeance Commanders. Still, he was with them for a long time. And apparently, as the current... I think he's in his 40s right now. Yes, as he's appearing in the anime. And the one thing that's never really explained in this series, why the heck he wears lipstick? Oh, and the thing is, in present day, he switched from using a sword to using pistols. My guess is because of his time with the White Bear Pirate. That's probably the reason why he basically does that. Now, in the case what they do, they go to various different places. Like, they they go like, so, they're like on the ship for a while. And then they can shoot from the sky, the sky Pia. What do you mean, Gunfall? Yes, Gunfall. And from what I can tell, yes, they brought back his original dub actor. And this was a scene that was actually mentioned. Well, yeah, mentioned at the end of the Skype PR, but it was not mentioned Odin was here too. Where they explore the city, they bob the snake, they find the golden bell, which has been there for a long time. And of course, they even showed of how that 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 carving was done, that fresh carving made after the pornograph thing was put there. Now, Robin herself first sees at the end of Skype PR. And this is basically the explanation of how they got there. I think it's down below, but the ship is, ship is a little bit in these repairs. So, they go to Water 7. Now, this is something quite interesting though, about Water 7 this period of time. Now, there is references to stuff, basically, that... How should I put this? Hasn't exactly happened yet. Like, we meet up with Tom. Now, this is the first time Tom has been seen in the main anime since... I believe since the I believe since I believe since uh, water the original War Seven arc, yeah. But that was mostly in flashback. This is basically a continue. This is probably for uh, those flashbacks. Yes. So we even see a brief appearance by a very young Frankie. And I think they may have changed his dub actor. I can't I can't really tell, but yeah, it's Frankie. So apparently Frankie met Odin. Maybe because he was so young, that's probably the reason why Frankie does never mention the fact he met Odin. Or the fact he met Goldie Roger. Yeah. <laughs> or the fact that he knew, like, like, here's the, I think he, I think it's implied he, he knew who so really is, so. And then we go to the Sabi uh, Archipelago, which is there very briefly. And then they go to the Freshman Island, they apparently go to the uh, Archipelago to get, get the ship coded. And they go down, and we are seeking. This is something that was also mentioned, or at least seen briefly, seen as a flashback during the events of the original Fisherman Island arc. So we get more explanation for this stuff here, which is great. The fact we have this happen, and we have them arrive and ride your ship, and he's confronted by King Neta himself. Oh yeah, and it's also mentioned that he had just assumed the throne a few minutes prior to this episode, and we see a young Shirley, who get this is three years old. And she still does the same stuff present day. And it's a good thing to this little girl who goes to be a smoking hot woman. <laughs> yes. Who just has to be Arlong's sister. And you know the strange thing is? Nami had no interaction with her in, 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 in the Fishman Island arc. You're thinking, really? She did it? Yeah, she did not. Uh, do not know the reason for this. It is quite strange. You would think that... This will be an interesting scene. She meets the sister of the man who murdered her adoptive mother. And no interaction. Now, I think the point of blame for this is probably Oda's fault. For you have Luffy interacting with Shirley. 
Which, for some reason... Now, here's the thing. The only person who brought the fact that she's Arlung's sister is... Hody Jones. He's the only one who actually brought that up in the original story arc. And... It's like... Did Nami not hear him when he said that? Because... I'm sure she'd be aghast the fact that uh, someone who's related to somebody who terrorized her as a child would be here in Fishman Island. But, nope. I'm not sure why. I think it was a missed opportunity on Oda's part. I mentioned, oh yeah, the fact that King Neptune's going to have a daughter. And this that was quite weird for, for King Neptune. Like, here in the flashback, you see he's wearing a shirt in present day. He apparently is not by wearing a shirt anymore. And his lips are kind of weird. Where you can just hear him talking. It's like his beard grows so much to cover his freaking mouth. Yeah, it's kind of weird when it comes to Neptune in the flashbacks. It is so bizarre. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And of course, Odin has mentioned that he's been to Vision Mountain before. So. And then right afterwards, we're thinking, okay, does he go to Punk Chaos next? Nope. Well, mostly put, they, they don't mention when he doesn't. I think, oh, but before they get to Sar Sabi Archipelago. They actually go to the very bridge that Nico Robin was sent to in, well, in present day, most of the two years prior to present day, where she was sent to by Batha Makuma. The country on the bridge. Yep, it makes a very, very brief appearance here for about 10 seconds. And I think probably the two areas they explored really good in the, in the, in the episode it is, was uh, Sky... It's like basically... We're basically revisiting something we've seen before. Skypea, Water 7, uh, Sabi Archipelago, probably the original one, uh, Fishman Island. I love the fact we revisit this stuff. It's great. And then eventually, thanks to also, apparently, make, make sure back to Brief, make, make sure back to Wano. And it's revealed when, when they, before, just before they get there, that Tor, that Toei, uh, is sick. And. According to her, it's like, if you don't take it back to Wano, I'm going to divorce you. Really? Why? You love him. Why the heck would you divorce him? So, she is dropping off the island, and she's there with Cat Vapor and Dog Storm. With their two children, Momonosuke and Hidori. And the fact his parents are shocked the fact he's... At this point, he had been gone for four years. And apparently, during a period of time, he got married and had two kids. And, like... It's like they're basically about to inform what's going on in the cafe because he does notice, though, apparently that the, 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 their outfits basically got patches on them. And I think he may have noticed in the background there's some smokestacks in the background. He may have noticed that, but he, but he does note to himself that something is different about Wano. He'll come back a year later after the whole thing is wrapped up. And the strange thing is, basically, this fact he kind of promised to return the White Parrots, he chooses not to. As soon as basically Roger Quest is wrapped up, they go to Zoe next, and after they get the four um, uh, scratchings, and they go Lab Tail, and this is something that even the manga got right here. Like they get there, we don't know what the island looks like. Yes, it's called Lab Tail. Apparently, uh, Roger named that because basically this is something where presumably Jewel Boy's treasure is. And they figured, okay, we found the last island, they become famous, and then he decided to disband the Roger Pirates because their job was done. They've completed the quest they wanted to do, which was basically explore the Grand Line, which there was a quest for that. So, they proceed to go separate ways. Um, Silver King Rayleigh, they, we do know he's still around present day, along with the ship's doctor. We see him in the, in the Laboon arc. But here's the strange thing, though. We have no idea what happens to the crew. It is completely unknown what happens to them. Or what the heck happens to a freaking ship. That's a gorgeous ship. And it's completely unknown what happened to Roger's ship. Because it's never mentioned at all. Like, did, did he keep it? After the Roger Power was suspended? I mean, technically, it's his ship. He can keep it if he wants to. But did he have it dismantled? It's completely unknown because Silver King really doesn't have any more. He doesn't have that ship. No. Uh, because he basically swims or he, he basically paddles in a small boat. But you would think someone like him might, might keep it because, well, he was, he was the vice captain of the Bunch Pirates. 
And it's shown in the post-war story where he shows up on Amazon Lily. When uh, when Beppo sees him, he shows up a lot of respect because he's a legendary pirate. And you can tell by the animation, the way it's shown there, that someone can really appreciate the fact that he did that. So he politely asks, he basically, like, it's almost like Beppo is, like, fanboying the fact he's, you know, basically a living legend like Silver King, really. Yeah, I remember that very well because it was an excellent scene. And I'm sure, I did get a chance to talk about this with uh, Chris George. I'm sure he must have been very happy with how that scene turned out because Beppo is a great character. And I've talked to him on Twitch, his, his chat, that... Beppo can make an excellent uh, piece of merchandise if they ever do it. But as far as I can tell, they've never made anything with him. Like, it's mostly the Straw Hats. Like, you very rarely get any character who's not a member of the Straw Hats to get their own merchandise. I mean, you, I think it's one for Sabo, uh, Koala, Rebecca. I think it's one for Vivi. But for... But Beppo, Beppo, I, I don't know if Trevor Law's got some merchandise now, but, excuse me, I would not be surprised if he does, but Beppo needs him, because Beppo is such a fun character, and he's somebody who is very close to Law, like, he's almost like a little brother to him, they have that brotherly relationship, that's why I can tell in the anime, oh, we also see when they're on Zoe, we, we, we even briefly go back to a flashback that was seen back in the whole cake arc. We get sort of basically, that's kind of added here, uh, basically as part of it. It's young Pedro. Yes, young Pedro is talking to Goldie Roger. Like, it's like this flashback that fills in gaps that we've seen flashbacks over the course of the entire series. And, like, if you watch it the way that I watched it, basically bench watching it, you're like, Wow, these flashbacks make total sense. And just fantastic. Then, of course, after they spend, he goes home. Then he's a form exactly what the heck happened. So, Curry basically was very happy to see him. Probably because it was his beautiful wife basically is praising him the whole time. So, he's a form exactly what the heck is going on. Orochi, apparently, of course, if you listen to flashback, they met his two future supporters. An old lady, who was, by the way, voiced by Linda Young. With a look of who this person is. She is the original Funimation dub actor for Frieza. Yes, you listen to this voice, it's Frieza. Which I believe this person also appeared in, in Yu Hakushu. Yes, and we see her ability is to change her appearance. Which, like, that's Bon Clay's ability. Yes, seriously. So, it's revealed that Orochi had these two manipulate everybody... The thing to oh he treat or oh to treat him like a little brother, even though it's a lie because they kept loaning him money. So he just basically got himself made the shogun. Due to all this but like first his proxy and then he just stays a shogun because he feels like it. Like, here's the thing. According to what he set up is that Odin was supposed to be a new Shogun when he came back from traveling the sea, and the fact that Orochi was supposed to basically be a proxy, you know, a stand-in until he returned. Orochi to give the spot, he basically can permanent Shogun for the next two dozen years. So, like, you have Orochi just by himself, of course, it's revealed that apparently that the retainer tried to fight Orochi, and they have attacking uh, Toki and injuring her leg, like, he does praise the fact that she protected their son. And then, by himself, he proceeds to run to the capital. And I do mean run. And he busts through the gate. He's basically there. He slices the doors. Like, Orochi apparently is not caring or doesn't hear the fact that, Hey, 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 Shogun, Odin is here. Run! <laughs> He's like, ah. Uh, yeah, he's probably drunk and like, oh crap, Odin's here! <laughs> That's his reaction. And then the course basically like he tries to attack him and all of a sudden he comes out and then he proceeds to strip down his one cops are dancing. Like, what the heck happened? And he does this for five years. Be an idiot. And then apparently with pays the business, like, oh you got free people? Like, like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So apparently he lied to him. And then Rochi, 
Now, actually, Odin decides to stand up and says, we're going to kill Kaido now. So, so then they proceed to basically go into battle, and Kitamon is wearing the outfit we see present day. I think everybody decides, like, their outfits they wear present day. And then they, they try to go to, to basically, oh, or Kaido's mansion. But then before they get there, they're confronted by Kaido's army. And you're thinking, what? Who the heck clicked their plan? That's not feeling the present day. What the heck's going on here? So they battle for quite a while. The samurai basically blast their way right through the forces. We see queen, king and queen there, but no Jack for some reason. He's not here. Oh yeah, and so Kaido, the reason why he basically made this little deal was because he wasn't strong enough that now he is. And of course, Odin proceeds to have a very good battle with him, slice him up. And then the battle ends, and kind of climactically, when the old lady decides to use her shaping powers to basically transform himself into Momonosuke, and then easily beat him. Kaido looks very ticked off by this, and it's not revealed exactly what happened to her until two episodes later. Yep. And then apparently they're charged with insurrection against the, the Shogun, despite the fact they attacked the Shogun, they attacked Kaido, his supporter, and they're sentenced to be boiled. And that's the episode. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed these episodes. I only have four more I'm going to do. Now, I was hopefully planning basically to get this done tonight. But because I wanted to eat tonight to celebrate my, my, my grandma's birthday. That's not going to happen. So, and I actually have planned to do five videos today. Or maybe more. But that's clearly not going to happen tonight. So... Next up, it could be basically Overlord, and then it's going to be one comic corner, and I'm probably going to call it Night. Okay, next view. Bye.